All right, welcome to Blackhawk Church. My name is Chris, one of the pastors on the teaching team here at Blackhawk Church. Welcome to all of you who are in the room with me right now here in our Brader Way facility in the east side venue. And those of you who are watching on a screen, perhaps in another venue here at uh, the Brader Way facility. Those of you who are at Blackhawk uh, downtown at the Upper House, and those of you at our new facility at uh, Blackhawk Fitchburg, uh, no matter uh, where you are, you might be listening on a podcast, uh, you might be in Valparaiso, Indiana, or Minneapolis, or Marion, so it's welcome uh, to all of you. If you're part of our uh, Chinese ministry, Dijong Zimei Ping An, good to have you with us also. Last week, we started a brand new uh, series called It's uh, Complicated. Uh, and It's Complicated is all about how to build healthy relationships in a hurting uh, world. This is where we're going uh, in the series. Last week, I started off uh, the series by talking about how we're all designed to be connected because uh, we're made in the image of God. Today's talk will be about uh, loneliness. Next week, on January 19th, we're calling it Vision Sunday because I'll talk a little bit about what God has done at Blackhawk in the past, and then I'll also talk about some things that are going to happen in uh, the future. We're just calling that Vision Sunday. And then Matt Metzger will talk about authenticity the week after that, forgiveness. Pastor Charles, you will talk about that, and then Matt will close uh, the series with a talk on good conflict. Well, I'm not only one of the teaching pastors here at Blackhawk Church, I'm actually uh, the senior pastor. I think I have that title because I'm one of the oldest pastors on the staff. But uh, one of my responsibilities as a senior pastor is a responsibility I just love, and that is that I get to introduce uh, new speakers uh, to you guys. So we have lots of pastors on our pastoral uh, staff, and the pastor who's going to speak today, it's a, this is first time on this platform, although it's not his first time teaching at Blackhawk Church. He's been a part of our staff uh, since October of 2018. He leads our college and young adult ministry. He is just a dynamic pastor. Why don't you welcome to the platform, Michael Napstad. Thanks, Chris. Awesome. Appreciate awesome. it. Well, thanks, Chris. I appreciate it. It's so great to be with you guys today. Well, hey, I actually want to start out by asking you all a question. If you've ever had the chance to own a car before, do you remember what car it was? Some of you have to, yeah, we, we got a yep, you're like, yeah, I remember. Some of you have to might actually think back to what your car was. So the car that I first owned, here's a picture of it. It was a red Nissan uh, 240SX, 1992. I loved this car. It was my first car. I loved driving it. I would find excuses to just drive my car whenever I could. I loved my car so much that I found that I drove my car into the ground. <laughs> You see, when I was 22 and I just graduated college, I realized my car is broken, so I need to get a car that isn't broken. I found myself at a used car dealership, and I just started looking at all the cars. And I quickly found out that I had three non-negotiables when it came to this new car that I was going to get. The first one was that it was newly used. And the second non-negotiable is that it had lower gas mileage. You know, I wanted to get good gas mileage in it. And the, the third non-negotiable, now this was actually the most important non-negotiable out there. I actually looked at all the cars, number one, through this non-negotiable. It was, seriously, it was the most important one. And it was that the back two seats had child car seat anchors in them. <laughs> I know you're thinking that's what every 22-year-old guy is looking for in a car. But I, I was serious because now that I graduated college, I was excited for this next phase of my life. And for me, that was to find a wife and have kids. Because a family was something that I desired the most in life. To, to, to be so intimately connected with one person and to raise kids with them. I mean, I felt that in my bones. So I needed a car to do that. So I got this one right here. It was, I loved this car. It was a gray Hyundai Elantra. And let me tell you, those child seat anchors secure. They were awesome. So now that I had this new car, I was really excited to, to go into this next phase of my life. But a year went by and no wife. And then another year went by, and another year, and another year, and another year, and another year. And as the number of years kept growing, and the number of cars I owned kept growing, my singleness kept growing as well. 
And that was hard. And, and, and somewhere in the middle of all this, I started to become aware of this, this feeling that started small, but the feeling kept growing. It was, it was this aching feeling that, that at times I, I would hardly notice it, but at other times this aching feeling would be so intense that I would find myself searching for something to do or something to consume to tame it. And I didn't know what this aching feeling was until I heard someone say its name. Loneliness. I was lonely. Now to experience loneliness is to experience disconnection from friends or community, to feel relationally remote or isolated. And most of us, all of us, have felt that way at different times in our life. But I actually want to hit the pause button really quick. And, and I want to say that I am no expert in loneliness. I mean, I'm not a sociologist. I'm not a counselor. In fact, some of you might be listening to this right now and you might be thinking, okay, cool. So Blackhawk got the single guy to talk to me about loneliness just because he hasn't found someone yet. And at this time, you might, start check, you might be checking out right now. And I totally get it. Like, I get that. But while I might not be able to speak into the different circumstances of your life, I can speak to the ache because that's the thing about loneliness. It aches. Maybe you have had kids in your car seat and, and recently you've been through a divorce and you're trying to navigate what it looks like to have shared custody and you're realizing that you can't see your kids whenever you want to and there's this ache Maybe you've had kids in your car seat and they've grown up and now they're not only out of your car seat, but they're out of your house and you're left with this ache. Maybe you're married and your relationship with your spouse is not what you thought it would be. Maybe you're single and you don't want to be. Maybe you're, you're in this life stage and you want to be in the next life stage and people who are around you are in a life stage kind of like the one you want to be in and you feel left back. Maybe you're in this long, lonely road of watching someone that you, that you love slowly pass away. Maybe someone that you know and love has passed away. I can't imagine the, the ache of loneliness that you could be experiencing right now. And people who study this say that loneliness is rising. A recent survey from Cigna said that 50% of all Americans are currently experiencing loneliness. But, but that's interesting because right now, we, the people right now, we are the most socially connected people in the history of the world. I mean, with apps like Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, we can experience digital connection with almost anyone at any time we want to. But what's also interesting is that we're statistically the loneliest generation in the history of the world. And if you work with college-age people or no college students, Hey, you don't need that to tell you. Like you just, you can see it. You can't miss it. And because of this, we're, we're learning a lot of things like that, that digital connection. It can't replace physical connection. That looking at a screen is not the same as looking into someone's eyes because a screen, guess what? It, it can't truly know you. A screen, it can't feel what you're feeling. A screen cannot empathize with you. Another survey uh, took a little farther, and Oxford academic said, loneliness is associated with a risk of early death that's equivalent to smoking 15 cigarettes a day. Wow, loneliness. Loneliness is also more lethal than obesity. That's why here at Blackhawk, we're, we're well, for another one, um, that, that people who are connected to community, this is really interesting, that they're associated with a 50% reduced risk of early death loneliness. Wow, that's why at Blackhawk, we're, we're really kind of kicking around the idea for a new slogan of join a life group or die. <laughs> <laughs> are we actually? Nope, okay. Don't say that again. Gotcha. So, sounds, sounds good. Okay. But as a pastor, I'll talk to people who are currently experiencing loneliness and I'll ask them, well, are you connected to a life group or an intentional community? And most of the time their answer is, well, well, no. And if that's you, 
How's that going for you? Maybe you were in a life group and it just didn't work out. Join another one. And if that one doesn't work out, join another one. Join another one. Keep on joining until you find one that sticks because it's, it's possible to be single or in any life stage and not experience an ache of loneliness because you're connected to community. But even though we're connected to community, even though being connected is extremely important in, in helping fight that ache, it's a much deeper issue. You see, we can feel lonely when it comes to other people, but we can also feel lonely when it comes to God. Our relationship, our, our connection with God, it, it begins at the beginning in where, where God created us, created humanity. The triune God, is, as Chris said in his talk last week, the three-in-one connected God created us out of his image. The Bible says, so God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. You were created in this perfectly connected, relational image of God. If you're like me, and you like illustrations, just uh, visual things, think of it like, like magnets. This magnet is God. The God magnet, look at it. <laughs> and this magnet is us. And we were actually created to be connected with God. These magnets are kind of small, so yep, you can see it right there. We were created to be connected to God. The Bible says that in the Garden of Eden, God created Adam, and Adam was connected to God. And it says that out of Adam's body, God created Eve. And Adam and Eve were connected to each other. And it was this relational connection that, that formed the very first body of followers of God. Adam and Eve were connected with each other. And Adam and Eve were connected with God. They were together, they were connected, and it was the, the intimacy that they had and their relationship with God that was not only the foundation, but the model for how they would relate to each other. They were connected, they were together, and because of this, they were not lonely. They were connected. And, and it wasn't just an emotional connection, but a very physical one. I mean, hear that clank? They were physically together. The Bible says that, that God walked with them, that God talked with them, that, that, that God loved them. And, and God asked them that, that they would show their love to God by, by listening and obeying God. But that's just something that they couldn't do. That's something that we couldn't do. You see, instead of obeying God, we disobeyed God. We, we sinned. And that made everything complicated. We made the decision to turn away from God. And because of that, we were cast out of the Garden of Eden. We were cast out of the presence of God. Have you ever just like played with magnets before? It's kind of weird. Like, what I, science is a weird thing. I don't understand it because it can be connected and it's a strong connection. But then when you turn the magnet around and you try to connect it, like, what the? That is so weird. I don't get it. <laughs> you can't perfectly connect it. And that's what happened with Adam and Eve and God in the Garden of Eden. And not only that, but Adam and Eve turned on each other. We turned on each other and we experienced disconnection. And because of that disconnection, because of that separation with others and God, we experience loneliness. And because we were created in the image of a relationally connected God. To experience loneliness is to experience the opposite of God. Loneliness is evil personified. That's why it aches so much. 
But if you're experiencing loneliness, it, 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 it doesn't mean that you're evil because loneliness is a result of us humanity, humans deciding to disobey and turn away from God. We were connected and now we're disconnected. But just because we were connected and disconnected does not mean that we have to stay disconnected because we can actually make the decision to turn towards God. We can make the decision to turn towards each other. And I want to talk about that. And I want to first talk about that by talking about how we can make the decision to turn towards each other. There have been so many times in my life where I've had to make the decision to, to turn towards others. And one of the most recent ones was when I moved from California to Wisconsin to Madison a little over a year ago. So I've moved a handful of times, but there was an element in this move that I was really unfamiliar with. And, and I didn't understand it, but I thought like, come on, I got this. The element was cold winters. <laughs> So I, I, you know, I could wear a tank top where I come from outside in the winter and be like, man, this is awesome. I'm going to get a little suntan before I go to work. But here, if I did that, I would die. I would be dead. But, but I thought, really? Cold winters? Snow Madison? Please. I've seen snow before. I got this. And I made the decision to move right before winter hit. And as you could guess, I was in my house, alone, looking outside the win uh, window, being like, people live like this? What is this? And, and days started to go by, and I was in my home being like, wow, do I go outside? And a day, and days, and days, and then I found myself not making contact with a person. I found myself being alone. And the, the, this ache of loneliness started to rise from, from, from moving to a new city and, and being physically alone, and I didn't know what to do. And that's when someone invited me to play in a pickup basketball league. Now, here's the thing about me in basketball. I'm bad. <clears throat> no, no, I'm really, really bad. In fact, if I go missing, look everywhere else but the basketball court, because I tell you right now, I will not be there. But a guy who goes to the downtown campus, that's right, downtown, he, he, he saw that I was newer into town and, and I wasn't that connected to community. So he said, hey, man, I want to invite you to come to this pickup basketball game every Monday night with me and a couple guys. It's going to be fun. And I thought, well, I'm bad at basketball, but the alternative is being completely alone, so I guess I'll show up. I remember just being in my house, wrapping myself, seriously, in every single warm thing I can imagine. And I waddled downstairs, which is dangerous, and I waddled to my car, and I opened my car door, and this is like California meets Wisconsin right here. This is exactly, and I'm trying to like get my body into the car. I got stuck, had to weasel my way in. I drove to the basketball court. We played in, and at the end of the night, I was reflecting back, and I was reminded of one, why I didn't play basketball, because I literally missed every shot, even like the grannies, which probably is why I was bad at basketball, because that was my go-to. But I also was reminded of the importance of getting out and connecting with other people. You see, now I was connected into, into a new community. I was connected with a new close friend. And I had something to do every Monday night instead of being alone because the thing about being alone is that you don't have to stay alone. At Blackhawk, it's our hope that everyone can experience intentional relational connection, that, that we can be a place and a community that turns towards each other. Even if the timing isn't perfect, the situation isn't perfect, or, or the community isn't perfect. Which if you're looking for the perfect community, you're going to be looking forever because a community is full of imperfect people. But even when you find yourself surrounded by, by people, there's still the chance that you can feel the ache of loneliness. It's possible. David, he was in the Bible, one of the most well-known kings in Israel, he was a man after God's own heart. 
He wrote a lot of the Psalms. And when we, we read these Psalms, we learn that David was well acquainted with the loneliness that, 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 that uh, can happen. And, and when we read these lonely Psalms and we do a little research, we understand that when David's writing it, he's probably surrounded by a ton of people, but he's still talking about being lonely. And in one of his, his Psalms, it's in Psalms 13, and, and I wonder if you've ever felt this way before. This is what, God, uh, what David wrote out to God. He says, how long, Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I wrestle with my thoughts and, and day after day have sorrow in my heart? How long will my enemy triumph over me? Look on me and answer, Lord my God. Give light to my eyes or I will sleep in death and my enemy will say I have overcome him and my foes will rejoice when I fall. David was lonely. David felt like God had forgotten him. You could almost feel his ache when you read these words, because the life and, and the connection with God that David expected was not what David was experiencing. Have you ever felt like David before? Have you ever felt, maybe you haven't said this out loud, maybe it's been in the quiet of your room or in your mind, but, but a feeling has come up and, you thought, and you're, you've been feeling or thinking, God, have you forgotten me? Where are you? Where are you, God? Maybe, maybe you, you experienced connection with God. You guys were connected. Or maybe you heard that connection with God was possible, so you've been turning towards God, but lately, in this one thing, or in this one way, all you feel is disconnection, separation, and that's hard. That's hard. But while that's still hard, I want to still talk about what it could look like to turn towards God. Because the reality is he's actually already turned towards you. You see, Jesus, God, knew that we were separated from him. He saw that ache. So over 2,000 years ago, God set something into motion that would change everything, that would draw us back to him. Over 2,000 years ago, God sent his son, Jesus, and Jesus turned towards us. But Jesus didn't just turn towards us blindly. It's important to know. No, Jesus knew exactly what it was like to be you, to be human. I mean, yes, Jesus was, was fully God, but Jesus was also fully human. And because of that, Jesus knew what it was like to feel that, that lonely ache that we can feel. I mean, Jesus experienced it with, with his family. Jesus experienced it with those that he came to save. Jesus experienced it with, with those who were the closest to him, his disciples, on the night before Jesus was gonna be crucified, Jesus went to the Garden of Gethsemane with some of his disciples to pray. And Jesus in the garden, he was praying and praying and he looked over at his disciples and they were sleeping. So Jesus went over to them and he's like, guys, come on, get up, get up, stay with me in this. I need you, I want you, be with me, pray. Jesus went over and he started praying and praying and he looked over and his disciples were sleeping and he went to them and said, guys, what are you doing? Get up, stay with me in this, listen to me. Jesus went over to pray and again, Three times they didn't listen to him. Three times they fell asleep in the Garden of Eden and in the Garden of Gethsemane. Those who were the closest to God did not listen to God and God was left alone. And it was in that loneliness that Jesus was arrested. And the 
walk from the garden to the cross kept getting lonelier until Jesus was alone on a cross. And the Bible says that while Jesus was on a cross, that about three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lemma sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why? Why have you forsaken me? I mean, if there was a bottom to what loneliness is, Jesus had just experienced it because at that very moment, all of the sins that I've done, all of the sins that you have done, all of the sins that humanity has done at that moment were placed on Jesus And because God cannot be where sin is, God could not be with Jesus, God turned away from Jesus. And on the cross, Jesus paid the price for our sins. Jesus died so that one day we will be fully with God again. Jesus became lonely so that you don't ultimately have to. When we were, we were in the garden and we were connected to God, we made the decision to, to sin, to not listen, to turn away from God. But on the cross, Jesus went before us. Jesus made a new way. Jesus turned towards us so that one day we could be connected with him again. That's why he came. And not only that, afterwards, God gave us his Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God. If you've made the decision to follow God, the Holy Spirit right now is living on the inside of you. And that's not a feeling, that's the reality that God is on the inside of you. I mean, talk about being close to God. Talk about being connected to God. And it's at moments like this when we realize how close and connected God is actually is to us, that loneliness seems to be gone. Because the true solution to loneliness is realizing that we are connected to the triune God in such a way. But the reality is we will still experience loneliness at different times and in different seasons until Jesus, until God one day physically comes back. And because of that, that that can be a, a hard road to navigate. But because of Jesus, we don't have to navigate it alone. The Bible says, come near to God and he will come near to you. Because when you have made the decision to turn towards God, you just can't stop it. Because that's the connection that we were created to live in. So if you are currently feeling the ache of loneliness, know that you are not alone in your loneliness. Not only has God turned towards you, but God knows your situation better than you think he does. And whether you're lonely or not, I want to encourage you to keep turning towards God. We're turning towards a God that felt the ache of loneliness on the, on the, in the garden and on the cross, and he felt it so that we can be close to others and close to him, so keep turning towards God. Pray to him. Spend time with him. Posture your life, what you do, your turn towards God. And I want to invite you. No, I don't want to, I actually don't want to invite you. I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you to keep turning towards others, even when it's complicated. And if you're listening to this right now, and, and honestly, you're not lonely. You're not experiencing that ache. You're not lonely. I want to say that's so great. 
I am so glad. But my question to you is, who are you going to invite to play basketball? (laughs) Who are you going to turn towards to help draw out of loneliness? Because Jesus, Jesus died and he rose again so that the single, so that the divorced, so that the empty nester, so that the silent struggler, so that the ones who are journeying towards losing a loved one or who has lost a loved one, so that the ones who are trying to get pregnant but they just can't, so that the college-age person, so that the young adult, so that the senior or the retired person, so that the middle schooler, and on and on and on and on. Jesus died and rose again so that we can experience this intimate connection with others and with God, so much so that we can become a part of his body. I mean, we are his body. We're his connected body. So where is the answer to loneliness? It's right here. This is it. So I don't, I don't know where you're at. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know if you're listening to this and something has happened in your life and it's so difficult and that ache is screaming. I don't know if you're not feeling lonely. I don't know if for the first time the, a word was put to what you were feeling. I don't know where you're at, but God does. And, and the reality is that even if you feel alone, he's with you. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. That's the truth. But what I do know is that because of Jesus, whether we feel alone or not, we're never really alone. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you for that reality. Thank you that we're never really alone. Faith is such an interesting, beautiful, difficult thing because often it's by faith that we have to realize that we're not alone. And I am so glad that you are a God that that I can relate to, that we can relate to. You experience loneliness, so we are not alone when we are experiencing loneliness. And God, I pray that as we are about to sing together, as we are about to take communion together, that we can be reminded that we are with a body right now. If we're at one of our sites, we're with a body of believers. And just today, we are not alone. We're a part of your body. As one voice we sing, and as one voice we take the elements, and we glorify you, the head of our body. Thank you that we're not alone. Thank you that you're with us, Jesus, and we love you. Help us, God, in every situation, but especially when we just feel like we're alone. In your name we pray, amen.